everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're new you're really welcome. I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France. And every Sunday we bring you an aspect of our private life. Now this Sunday I've just gone through the house and sorted out those things that needed making do and mending. You know those things that you just put off and really need to get to. So this week is all about that. Let's not waste stuff, let's fix things, let's get things done. So welcome to my bits and pieces that I've done this week to save money by making do and mending. And if you enjoy the video, go on, hit that thumbs up button. Okay, so here's my little sewing machine that um, I got from the charity shop. My aim was that I would service it, give it a good oil, clean it and get it back to them and say to them, it's all running perfectly and it's lovely. Well, it's not running and it's, and what, what it means is if you switch a sewing machine on and it just runs without you pressing down the button, it means that this, the capacitor, has burnt out. And these capacitors on these little Singer sewing machines are famous for burning out. And if you take the foot pedal apart and you smell that, it smells like burnt gingerbread. Quite a smell. So um, if this was the older models, you just unscrew that and you would just screw in the uh, capacitor. If you're British, you'll know what I mean by wiring up a three pin plug. So um, I'm not a qualified electrician and uh, even though this is the world's simplest repair to break the solder off and solder on a new capacitor, I'm not happy to do that and send that back to the shop. So what I have decided to do is ask them what they'll take for the machine because they wanted 25 euros for it. Um, if they insist on that, I'll happily pay it and I will, I, I will keep it. So I will do this, I will do this mend. So I'm just going to get onto eBay and order myself a capacitor to come. But other than that, the machine's in really good order. It's a lovely little 1960s, 1970s portable Singer sewing machine and it's great. Um, if, if I go to, you know, my craft group or sewing club and I want to take a little machine with me or do some sewing lessons there for other people, I'd just take this. I wouldn't take my... <laughs> Hoofing great owner. So um, I'll see what they say, but like I said, I'm going to send off for the capacitor. Hopefully, it will get here quickly and I can get this fixed. As I said, no one should be doing an electrical repair and selling it ever, ever, ever. I can see it's an easy, very safe thing to do for me, but I've decided now I'm going to keep this little machine. So I'm going to just get it, give it a good clean. And here's the inside and other than it being fluffy and I'll put a little bit of oil on the moving parts, it's in really good condition. You can see where I've blown the fluff out of the mechanism with uh, air that I use for cleaning out my sewing machines. I'll just take it apart and I'll clean out the inside. It's just fluffy. That's all it is. And everything else in really good order. It's such a shame about the capacitor. Anyway, we've, we've ordered one and it's on its way. Here are some more make do and mending. I have here a very sorry looking Dobby's bed. All the stuffings are gone. Seems to be unstuffed in lots of directions. And uh, even though the dogs have new beds, they really like this one. So I'm gonna cut out this old cushion. Then I'm going to <laughs> unstuff the cushion. The cushion is apt, I'm just showing you the pillow. You can see that shot, it's just, it's a very cheap, nasty pillow. But I'm going to use the stuffing from inside the pillow. Let's just remove that from there. Aha! It's a great way, and I will stuff the cushion. And there is the well 
little stuffed dog bed all plumped up. It was all saggy and baggy and and the dogs, for some reason, they love this old dog bed. So there it is. Good as new. Well, nearly good as new. Good enough. And that's what Make Do Mend is all about, isn't it? Giving those things that other people might throw away a bit more life so it doesn't get wasted. And I think young Mary here really quite likes it. We all do this one, don't we? One of our most simple Make Do and Mends is using this is old pajamas and they're pretty threadbare at certain places and they've been mended and they're not comfortable where they're mended so they really are absolutely past it now so now they're just going to be cut up and become cleaning cloths and even my little basket that i keep my cleaning cloths in was just a few cents from the charity shop let's get them cut up there they are old pajamas have now become dusters and all my cleaning cloths are just old cloths cut up and used again it's the absolute basics isn't it of make do and mend they were too tatty to give to the charity shop so they're just now dusters and as a hint old t-shirts make the very very best cloths for cleaning windows aren't what they used to be are they they're just not very good quality and you know that's no good for sleeping on and it's even a bit thin to turn it into a dog bed really but I'm going to make this into a cushion this size so I will use my cushion pad here to see what size I want it to be so I'm going to put a little cut in it about here and I will then know that much all of this I'm going to cut off and stuff into this side and that will boost this pillow and I'll be able to use it I make I make cushions to donate and this is just handy and here Okay, and I'll take the end bit off and I'll just stuff it in about there. I'm going to get a pen and I'm going to mark it. There you go. All off camera. Maybe inside the cushion, nobody will see it. Right. So from about there, pull that back. All this is going to get cut off. And stuffed in. Amazing how a moment of clarity can just come to you, can't it? I thought it's just going to be a cushion, so all I've done is taken it and stuffed it inside itself. So I've now taken a perfectly useless pillow that was past its best and turned it into a cushion pad. So all I will do is take that to my sewing machine, tuck it over twice, put a seam down it, and I have a perfectly good pillow pad now that would fit inside a cushion cover. And I'll stick that in the washing machine. That is now another spare window cleaning cloth. So there we go, another one saved. I will, let's, let's just test it. Would it work? I know I haven't sewn it yet. Let's imagine it's going in here. There we go, perfectly serviceable, worn out old pillow now turned into, with a bit of a, I'll just sew it up and show it you afterwards, a quick stitch and that'll make a really good cushion pad that I can use from useless to usable. So you saw me just literally cut the pillow in half, stuff the pillow filling in and now I have a perfectly usable cushion pad. I love to make cushions, I love to, scrappy projects and sometimes I've not got much left and I am going to make some Christmas cushions to decorate our lounge with this year 
And that's, a, as I said, it's gone from being an unusable pillow to a perfectly usable cushion pad. Just there, you can see the two wires that have been snipped where the previous capacitor was. I'll use my soldered iron to get rid of those wires and put the new capacitor in. Soldering iron's up to heat, so we'll dive in. We go one capacitor replaced for a new capacitor. Job's done. So the machine's got a new capacitor. It's been serviced by me. It's all clean. It's working perfectly well. I've tested all of the stitches, and I'm really, really happy now. Um, I went back to the charity shop and had a discussion with them, and said exactly when I told you that I wasn't happy for us to do the soldering and bring it back into the charity shop and that and they said well would would I do I still want to have it and I said yes and I and I got the machine for 15 euros in the end um basically sold a scene and we spent five euros on the capacitor we fixed it so I've got a really really good little lightweight singer traveling sewing machine for 20 euros and it sews beautifully such a lovely machine and i've always wanted a little lightweight thank you yourself I've always wanted a lightweight singer. I, for years and years and years, the one machine that eluded me was a featherweight. And you don't, thank you. Put my foot near the pedal. And I've never managed to pick one up, either in the UK or here in France. So I'm really, really happy with this. It's now, my, if I go to my craft group and I ever want to do any sewing there, I am gonna take this one. I'm more than happy. Good bit of make to amend. The Singer sewing machine is perfectly well and ready to use. So here's something else I'm going to do a bit of make doing and mending today. I have got this table runner that I made out oh, more, more, well, more than 10 years ago. I've probably used it once. I probably made it to learn how to make this block. It's not, it's not great. It's not great. It's not my best work. What I'm going to do with it though is turn it into a little bag that I can use or I can give to a friend and I'm going to make the front and the back for one panel. I'm going to make the one panel into handles and I'm going to turn one panel into and make it cut it down smaller and turn it into an internal pocket. And uh, I won't show you the whole process of this. I'll show it you in snippets because it's not what you, you're not what you're here for. You'll see what, what I do with things, basically. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it into a little bag. So what have I done so far? I have deconstructed it. I have taken the binding off the side and that I will press open and use again. So let's just pop that over there. I've got two of the blocks that I will make into internal pockets. So that would be a very handy little bag. I will remove the binding from the edging as well, which you can see matches that edging. And those, when I put new bindings on them properly, not the shabby job I did in the past, when I was a learner, give myself a break here, these will become the handles of the bag. So I'm now going to put the pockets on. So here's the next stage. I've just pinned on the inside pockets. It's going to be a very delicate, gentle sew here with my walking foot because that's a lot of layers of fabric and I'll bet you 10 euros my needle will break at some stage. So 
got some spare needles ready and I will sew that on very carefully. Just in case I didn't mention it, I have taken, as I said, taken the edgings off this and the pockets will be on the inside. So here are my handles and I use some binding I already had, some spare binding from a previous product. I've also put it on the top of the bag and I'm going to sew on my handles. And then I probably will just show you the finished bag. And there it is. So I had a table runner that was sat in my linen cupboard that I wasn't using. That's cute and I love the colours. So there we go. You can see now how I've turned it into a useful bag. And I thought about making a bag because today's Friday and I go to craft group on a Friday and sometimes I just need something small to pop a little project in that I'm working on. And you can see inside there, it's only roughly sewn. I could go over that later on and put a bit more binding on that to make it neat. But there's the pocket so I can put my scissors in there and my rotary cutter and anything I'm doing can go into there. And it's gone from being a table runner that I didn't use into being a little bag that I will use. Thank you so much for watching. We love all of your comments. Do you make do a man? What have you repaired this week? What have you made good this week? What have you been up to this week to save money? Thank you to everyone who hits the like button. It's so very, very kind of you and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.